What's going on guys, Stevie here with Lucky Crit, and today I wanted to do a bit of an interim episode in this Fire Emblem Fates Conquest Let's Play. Today let's talk about My Castle, and I'll give you guys my My Castle address, so if you have the game, you can come check it out, and we can connect online. And maybe we could even do some online multiplayer. Let's jump into this. If we switch to the bottom screen here, and I actually also set up some cool transitions now for you guys, you can check out my My Castle address, I'll also link it in the description down below if you want to check it out. Come visit, come say hello. And maybe we could even collect some calling cards and battle each other online at some point. I'd also like to use this video as kind of a hub for other people, so if you'd like to post your My Castle address, please post it in the comments down below and other people can check it out. Let us know what you've got, what skills you have on your characters, and also if it's an easy seize or not. And we'll kind of go over some of that stuff in this video as well. So, this is your address. If you don't have an address currently, what you can do is you can go in here and you can go update data, and that will uh, connect you to the internet and get you all set up. And then if you're wondering what your card is, you can click the uh, sort of card button on this bottom screen here, or you can also go into the settings and info and castle address is right there. So you can also set up street pass and spot pass so that you can get other people's information by passing them on the street in real life, of course. And we can also go and visit castles. So there's kind of a list here. We can go recommendations, recently updated, calling cards, castle address to search for a specific person or we can search for a castle name. So I think it would be kind of cool. Let's go and look for some of the recently updated castles here and just check out some of the things that we can do with some other people's castles. So we've got Fort David, Gussug, Pizza for Skills, Fort Vinoy, Hollow Bastion, Fort Sarah, and of course the list continues on. What I'm gonna do is, let's, let's go to Pizza for Skills. That one's kind of funny. You got my attention. Obtain data, and now we're gonna visit. Now one of the things to keep in mind is that if you do actually go to the item shop and buy any items, you will be instantly kicked out, as well as visiting their arena and doing a battle. So first first thing that you always want to do when you head to someone else's castle is let's go and find their resources here. This happens to be a Revelation playthrough. And when you start up a Revelations playthrough, you actually get four resource mines. So we got some pearls here with Leo. I see. Setsuna over here has some peaches. We've already checked out the sapphires. And we've got some dairy cows over here as well. Actually, look at all the cows they have. Let's take a look at that. Oops. We got like five cows in there. Our Betsy is all alone in ours. When you check out the actual My Castle in that list that we just looked at, if you want to know which are revelations and which are not, I believe the name is Vala. I'm not sure what story significance that has yet, because I obviously haven't played it yet, and maybe that's a spoiler, but uh, you'll see Nor, Hoshido, or Vala. Now that we've done that, what we can do, if we like this castle, is we can come up here and talk to the actual owner. We can give them an accessory, which I believe doesn't actually subtract anything from you, but we don't actually have anything to give them just yet. Uh, we're not too far in the game. Um, one thing I also want to note, too, is if you'd like to visit my castle from my Birthright playthrough, which is a bit farther, I'm on chapter 21 currently in that game, so there's a bit more to do in my castle. What you can do is check out the description down below and also post it on the screen now, and if you go to the, that my castle address, you should visit my Birthright one instead of this Conquest playthrough. Now, if we like this castle and we want this to be somebody that we kind of check up on often or come visit again just because we like the resources that they have or anything like that, we can obtain their card. If you're wondering how their units match up against yours, we can go check strength here and kind of check them out. We would get wrecked because this is obviously somebody that's played through the game. They have level 18 snipers, level 20 falcon knights, and they themselves are a level 20 nor noble. So obviously can't do that. Some castles will be set up for an easy seize, and what that means is they've basically turned all their units off to the point where you can kind of just run up and seize the throne in the actual battle setting. And what that'll do is it'll allow you to buy skills and everything without actually having to battle their castle first. So that's helpful. What you do want to pay attention to though is some people will have the skill aptitude in their castle on certain characters that shouldn't be there. If the character is a generation one character that's not Mozu, so Ryoma, your unit, Azura, Felicia, anybody else, from the first generation that's not a child character, if those units have aptitude on them and they're not Mozu, that's actually a hack and you're not supposed to be able to get aptitude on those particular units. The only reason why the kids can have aptitude is because depending on who you match Mozu up with and have a child with, that child can get the aptitude skill. So it is actually possible to get aptitude on any of the children characters 
However, if there's a first generation character like Ryoma or any of the other ones that I listed before as well as the others, that's actually hacking, that's not possible, technically you shouldn't have that. It doesn't really break the game, but if you're absolutely opposed to hacking, don't get those skills from people, don't bother picking them up, and just avoid those. So I'm not going to battle in their castle just because they'll totally wipe the floor with us and we don't know if this was an easy seize. Sometimes people will name their castles easy seize or other things like that when it comes to the skills so that it's easier to know what you're checking out before you actually head in. So what I'm going to do now is we're actually going to head over to the arena and maybe bet on one of the resources that we just got. Who's in here? Hunting party. Keaton. And Keaton is classed up, so that's good. Let's risk... You know, let's, let's risk a peach, I don't care. Round one against a mechanist. So, you can go round by round and kind of leave after one round, but it keeps duplicating the prizes. However, it does also get harder, so you have to be careful. Ooh. Say goodbye. Look at that crit. Nice job. Fresh meat is the best. So now you'll see that the stake actually went up. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go for the second round just because that was so easy. Let's see what happens here. Yes, we know that if we lose, we'll lose everything. Okay. Come on, dodge. Nope. I think he's going to lose here unless one of these 15s doesn't connect. Dodge. Oh! Lucky. Nice job. Where's my praise? Okay. So now there's actually a third round because they've upgraded their arena to level three, but let's not do that because your HP, as you can see, kind of remains the same. I, I think you heal a little bit in between rounds, but not enough to fully heal it. And it's definitely more risky the further you go into it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna quit now and keep what we've got. So we got four peaches out of that, which is pretty Fresh cool. Meat. So as you can see, it just kicked us out. Time to return home. So we're, our time in this castle is done. And that also happens when you purchase any particular item from the shop as well. The cool thing about that though, is when you go to somebody else's castle, you actually use their unit in the arena. So if say Azura is in there and your Azura isn't very good, you don't have to worry about that because you're using theirs. So you totally don't have to worry about that. We got some stuff in here to check out. Oh, she found some berries. That's cool. So we got another resource. If you look at the bottom screen, I'll switch right here. You actually have a chart to the right that shows all of your resources. Obviously, the two or four, if you're playing uh, Revelation, the two or four that you get by default, you're going to have a crap ton of those. So you're going to be looking for those other ones from other people's castles in order to be able to buy accessories and stuff later using them. So keep an eye out on what you're kind of low on, and then you can check out other castles and get them from those castles. So let's switch back here. Let's, let's collect our milk from Betsy. And we could actually give Lilith something as well. I'm not sure why it does that. The first place that you enter in after visiting someone else's castle, it does the kind of saving sound. Not too sure why it does that, but that's cool. Let's see if you can give us a better level than what you gave us last time. Yes, you can. Much better. Look at that. I feel like last time you got speed anyway, which is kind of cool. Okay. Awesome. So if you're playing Birthright, Lilith will be able to heal you in a specific range around her little area here at the temple, which you can't actually move when you edit your castle, so you can kind of position that in strategic places. If you're playing Conquest, Lilith will actually be able to attack for you and use kind of a Dragon's Breath attack. And if you're playing Revelation, Lilith will have both, so you'll be able to pick and choose which one you want to use. Let's go over here to our topaz mine, collect some topaz. And let's go into private quarters and see what we got in here. It's probably just Felicia, right? Yep. We got Felicia again in here. Let's switch to, I believe it's the bottom screen, right? Am I right? Yes, it is. So, hello, Felicia. Thanks for always being so nice to me. You've never made me feel like a servant. I kind of feel like she says that one all the time. But whatever, that's cool. So, increasing the relationships here. 
which uh, is actually pretty important to Conquest. When people first heard about the fact that petting was being removed and we weren't sure if you were actually keeping this private quarters in your My Castle, people were so worried because this is another way to boost your support ranks with your characters. And in Conquest, you're not going to have much extra time or extra chapters or anything to be able to raise that stuff, so you have to be very careful about that. But thankfully, it is still in the game. They did keep it in. They didn't completely butcher it. So that's all good. Over here we have the Records Hall. In here is just a bunch of kind of side features that you can take a look at. First feature, compatibility. We have Sage Match and Hubba Tester. I'm not sure why they added the Hubba Tester feature. So basically this is just kind of a joke functionality where you can take a look at how two units feel about each other. I think it's random every time. So cooking a hot tasty meal together might stir up some conversation. I don't know, let's, let's try again, see what it says this time. So now we're a 49. It's just kind of a joke functionality. There's really no rhyme or reason to any of this. It's just sort of a fun little thing to do. Then we can take a look at the library here and take a look at the unit roster. And I do believe that if your unit has actually died, if you're if you're worried that somebody died and you're not sure, you can actually look in here and I do believe that it will tell you in the description of the character itself if they're deceased or not. So that's useful because otherwise there's really no way of knowing whether you've lost somebody aside from going through your entire unit list and seeing if they're not there. We also have some ancient text in here, which you'd have to decipher. I think that's just kind of a little fun side activity. Theater to replay some of the movies that you've seen from the game. And a support log where you can review all the old support conversations that you've had with other characters. And uh, you can see in here, these are actually, this is actually pulling from my other save files as well. We've also got this little area over here with the bulletin board. This is where other people's units will appear here from either street pass or spot pass. And you can engage with them and battle with them. If we go over to the crystal ball over here and click update data, which I actually already did, you can actually download your most recent data and get your feedback from other people who visited your castle and any other updates like that. If we go into inbox here, we can take a look at street pass results, feedback from other players, accessories that they may have sent us, bond units, buildings that they might have used when they visited our castle, and rewards. And so we also have battle bonuses and visit bonuses in here. So depending on how many castle battles you participate in, how many castles that you visit from other people, you can get some free stuff in here. If you see Seat of Trust and Raider Katana, and uh, there's a lot in here. So go have fun, collect what you can. Over here, you can also check out the amiibo functionality. So if you actually own any Fire Emblem amiibo, like Marth, Ike, Lucina or Robin, you can actually put them on top of your 3DS's bottom screen, scan them in, they'll appear in your castle, they'll give you a couple items, and I believe after three times of using this, you'll actually be able to battle them and recruit them in your game, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, I don't believe that Roy works, even though Roy is a Fire Emblem character and should have been added to the game. I'm not sure if they're actually going to do that, I think it's a little too late in the lifespan for them to add that functionality. However, unfortunately, uh, on this 3DS, because this is an original 3DS that I'm using to play this game for you guys, you can't actually scan it in using the bottom screen. That's a functionality of a new 3DS, which I actually do have right here from an earlier video. So if I use this Game Boy, I could actually scan them in for you guys. So maybe I'll do that in a future video. And then I'll switch back over the capture card with the game chip so that you can actually see them in my castle. However, if you want to do it with an original 3DS, you will actually have to buy an external add-on that you plug in to be able to scan the Amiibo. So, also in here in the bonuses, we have our path bonus. Uh, if you paid attention to the series, in the last episode I actually picked up this stuff. But depending on which games you have, so if you purchased the game and also got uh, the other version and Revelation as DLC, you'll get more of these rewards in here. So this is rewards for having all three because I'm playing on the special edition. So we've already picked up all that stuff. A lot of these are class changing items and stat boosting items as well. If we look over here in wireless, we can parlay, which invite another player to our castle and vice versa, and we can also just straight up battle people online. Now that's one of the greatest additions that this game has over Awakening, is in Fire Emblem Awakening, the only wireless functionality that you can use with your friends is you can have their characters appear on your world map, and you can battle them, but when you fight them, you're sort of just fighting their team and the AI takes over for the other team that you're fighting. You can't actually battle 1v1 with your friend. So in this game you actually can, which is one of the greatest additions that we got between this game and Awakening. Over here we also have our Street Pass team, which this is where you can set up your castle so when other people visit it, these are sort of your battle strategies, what units you want to use, what they're equipped with, the whole setup and layout of your castle for those battles. And this is where a lot of people will actually set up their easy seas uh, castle setups. 
which means that none of their units are going to fight you. You can just kind of run up to the throne and seize it and just be able to buy their skills, which is pretty cool. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some further insight if you didn't know all of the features of my castle. Let me know your My Castle address in the comments down below. Check out mine in the description if you missed them in the video. And maybe we can visit each other's castles. Maybe we can battle in multiplayer. Let me know what you'd love to do. This castle is a little bit barren right now just because we just kind of started the playthrough. We just got access to this My Castle. So as it goes on, in fact, if you're watching this like months from now or even years from now, this castle should be totally decked out by the time you come to visit. So take a risk, take a chance, come visit it. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Post your My Castle addresses. I'll certainly visit them if you guys post them. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next episode. What's going on, guys? Stevie here with Lucky Crit, and today we're going to do the fifth episode of our Fire Emblem Fates Conquest Let's Play. This is going to be the big episode where we... I got one that'll trigger Cameron. All right, oh, I'm ready. Let's go. You ready? I've never yeah. played Banjo-Kazooie. You're dead to me. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, you're dead. You're dead to me. I own Banjo Kazooie on oh, two different things. My lord. See, I was gonna say this guy. The fact that I haven't played Majora's Mask.